Okay, I would first of all like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak on this wonderful occasion of Boris's uh, birthday. And actually, the, the subject of the talk started, were, was motivated by Boris. At the time, I was trying to understand how you can show numerically the many body localization transition. And I had the hunch that uh, entanglement would be a good way to, uh, to study this uh, phase transition. About that, the jury is, a bit, is still out. There is some tantalizing evidence, which I'll talk about towards the end, but uh, not, no uh, conclusive uh, smoking gun. But anyway, along the journey, uh, several interesting uh, systems for which the entanglement helps to understand and quantify uh, quantum phase transition came out, and I'll share with you these uh, systems. Okay, so uh, first of all, what is entanglement entropy? And in, in very simplistic, uh, simple way, it's basically you divide your system into two regions, region A and region B. The whole system is in a pure state. And therefore, if I have two regions, I can define a, a basis for region A and a basis for region B. And I can write the pure state as some combination of the, state of the basis of region A and the basis of region B. Well, the, in some sense, this is almost trivial. Interesting to note is that in the good old days when you wanted to present a slide of a mad scientist, you would show someone in a white lab coat with uh, flowing gray hair writing E equal MC square. Apparently, nowadays you need to write this equation in order to uh, show a mad scientist. Anyway. You can actually do better than that. Instead of having a tensor with two indexes, you can have only one index, and that's by using the Schmidt decomposition. For the particular uh, state that you are considering, you always can build two bases of region A and region B, where uh, it's enough to take this combination of vector instead of a tensor. How do you do it? it? You do it just by writing down the reduced uh, density matrix, diagonalizing it, meaning that I trace out either region A or region B, and I get a reduced uh, density matrix. And actually, the coefficients of uh, the eigenvalues of this reduced uh, density matrix is the entanglement entropy, just the uh, regular Shannon or uh, von Neumann entropy. This has some desirable uh, properties. The most obvious one of them is that the entropy, if we're calculating the entropy of region A, is the same as the entropy of region B. And uh, basically, this entanglement entropy has drawn much attention on its general properties, and one of the most celebrated results about it is the area law, basically that the entanglement entropy is proportional to the area bounding region A connecting it with uh, region B. Okay, very nice, but why does it interest us as uh, condensed matter physicists? I find two main motivations. One, the most, uh, one of the most exact uh, uh, numerical methods to calculate the properties of uh, ground states of uh, many particle physics is actually based on this uh, idea, although when it was developed, it wasn't presented in terms of entanglement entropy, but it has the same ideas. And second, it's a very, as I'll try to convince you during this talk, it's a very, very sensitive and uh, good way to identify and quantify quantum phase transitions in different systems. Okay, let's look into the first example uh, uh, that I want to look into. It's uh, for a one-dimensional system, we define the area law. 
d is equal one, so therefore the, the entanglement entropy is supposed to be constant. Actually, there's an additional logarithmic correction to it, which gives us a lot of information, and the logarithmic correction is proportional to the length of the, of, uh, of the region A. Okay, if I have some finite correlation length, for example, but not, we will see later that also for the Anderson transition, the localization transition, the same behavior appears. It is bounded, it saturates on the length scale of the correlation length or the localization length. Okay, so let's be a bit more concrete. I'm taking the most generic one-dimensional uh, Hamiltonian, meaning I have an on-site energy that I can use also for uh, disorder by defining some widths of it. Uh, next, uh, nearest neighbor hopping nearest neighbor interaction, and here very uh, naturally I divide the system into region A of length LA and region B with, with the remaining lengths. The system actually without disorder is a simple, uh, we know how to solve it, it's, it's a Latin liquid and a lot is known about it. Actually, also the entanglement entropy of region A has uh, two additional corrections which I didn't present in the previous slides. One is a finite size correction, and another is if I have finite fillings. The terms that I gave before was for a half filling. So basically, close to half filling, the entanglement entropy changes very little. Actually, from this only from this information, one can uh, already characterize uh, one uh, nice uh, fa quantum phase transition, and that is a qu uh, quantum phase transition connected with uh, the properties of a ladder, and it's actually quite a straightforward uh, behavior. If I had such a system where I have uh, some uh, hopping along the ladder and some transverse hopping, and if I assume that they are equal. So as function of the filling of, uh, of this uh, system for, for the non-interacting uh, system, I have a very simple behavior. Because uh, basically I have two one-dimensional bands uh, sliding one towards the other because of the hopping between them. And then if I'm filling them up with, uh, with electrons, up to, uh, to a quarter filling, I have only one band which is filled, therefore only one uh, mode. Then I have a, uh, two modes, and if I'm continuing to fill it up, I have only one mode, trivial. Interestingly, if I put in interactions, and the simple, simplest case is uh, just uh, perpendicular interaction, I will have a situation where although I'm filling up the second band and I'm supposed to see a second mode, this mode will be frozen up, and I see only one mode part of the way, and only for higher uh, fillings close to half filling, I'll see two modes that go through the system. Okay, this was predicted by Matveev and Lurkin, and actually it's very easy to see it for, uh, from calculating the entanglement entropy. Let's look on the black curve. The black curve is just the case where I'm considering the non-interacting behavior. It shows the same behavior times two, which we, for, from quarter filling to half filling, I'm discussing here a system with uh, 200 sites. It just shows the same behavior that I've sh shown you before about the entanglement entropy. Red, uh, green, and blue are stronger uh, transverse uh, interactions. And let's look on the blue, it's the clearest. We start filling up additional electrons into the second, into the second band but the entanglement entropy doesn't change simply because it's not an extended mode. 
suddenly we hit a point where we have two extended modes. Very clearly we see that we are jumping toward a second mode and going back to the, almost to the entanglement entropy of the clean system. So in a sense, this is the clearest way to see a quantum phase transition. You just need to count. And actually, as Rabbi from the same institute that Boris is in, like to claim the best experiments are the ones that you only need to count in them, nothing more. Okay, L let's move to another system that we know uh, that shows, well, a quantum phase transition on first of all uh, the behavior of the localized regime. One dimensional systems we know are always localized and uh, if we are in an always localized uh, regime, we expect that we have some finite size, some finite uh, localization lengths uh, that characterize the systems according to our previous arguments. We're supposed to see there that uh, our uh, entanglement entropy saturates on this uh, localization length. Uh, if we add interactions, so we know pretty accurately the behavior of the localization lengths uh, as function of disorder. We know also that if we're discussing an interacting system with uh, repulsive interactions, G is uh, smaller than one. Therefore, the, lo uh, the localization lengths becomes smaller and smaller as we look on stronger and stronger interactions. Okay, can we see this behavior? So, first of all, one can see the finite size corrections. Uh, we see a logarithm for clean systems and quite big, up to 1,500 here. We see a logarithmic behavior almost till the middle of the systems and we have these finite size corrections appearing here and everything is good. For short systems, everything falls atop one another and then we start to see the finite size uh, behavior for longer and longer systems. What happens if we put in disorder? Okay, here we are looking on the simplest case, disorder, no interaction, and indeed the localization length for a uh, localization length that we know to calculate is around 60. Indeed, for different length scales, uh, uh, we see that all of them saturate at around this value of the localization length. And we see that actually the length doesn't pay, play much of a role as we, you expect if the localization length is much smaller than the system size. So you see the saturation in the entanglement entropy quite well and you can even read off the saturation points, the localization length and get a good agreement. What happens when you take into account interactions? Basically, indeed, you see the behaviors that you expect. Let's see here. We have here in the non-interacting case, the saturation occurs somewhere here, around 200. We increase interaction, red, uh, green, blue. The saturation occurs earlier and earlier. And if you want, you can even fit it to the form given here. So entanglement entropy is, not, is a good way to follow after the localization length, meaning we can pull out of it information about the systems. And if, uh, and if you think about it, calculating the localization length for a full many-body interacting system is not trivial. And from my experience, this is the easiest way to do it. Okay, but we're looking for somewhere that we have a phase transition. Here. Yes? What is the physical origin of those error bars? Uh, in my numeric, I, uh, what is the origin of the error bars? We, uh, we are sampling here different uh, realizations of disorder and it's very important to see their widths. We'll see 
in a couple of slides that actually that's also a way to uh, characterize a quantum phase transition. Maybe even be better than looking on the average or the typical value. Okay, so where do, can we get your uh, phase transition? If we take into account not only repulsive interactions, but attractive interactions, then if we'll just play with the, with the formula given previously, we'll see that if uh, G is uh, equal three, uh, three halves, the correlation length, uh, the localization length will, uh, will diverge, and actually it's a point where we start to see superconducting correlations. So here we have an insulator, but actually if we'll go back and try to do the previous trick, me meaning reading off the correlation length, the localization from the saturation of the entanglement entropy, we have here a problem from the point of view of numerics because as you can see here, here's the localization length in the vicinity of the transition grows very quickly. And we'll have to go to extremely large systems in order to see that we are here in an insulator and not in a metal or a superconductor. So actually, it's uh, not a very good way to characterize what we are seeing in this region. Fortunately, and that's the answer to your question, it's not only, the, look, this is the average entanglement entropy. Both of them, for the sizes that we see, show no saturations, are almost identical. On the other hand, if I'll plot the distribution of the entanglement entropy, meaning cutting the system to, uh, at, to uh, size LA for different realizations and uh, reading off the entanglement entropy in each case, if I'm in the region where my psi is much bigger than the system size, but nevertheless I'm not in the superconducting regime, I see more or less a Gaussian behavior, a well-characterized uh, well, uh, behavior of the, of the distribution of the entanglement entropy. On the other hand, if I'm in the, in the superconducting uh, regime, the distribution suddenly becomes uh, very different. See a distribution which is very skewed, has a very long uh, tail, and generally looks very different than the Gaussian uh, behavior. Actually, uh, one can do uh, better. One can even scale all these uh, distribution, uh, distributions, and uh, one can get uh, what's known in statistics as the Levy-stable Levy alpha distribution which basically, from our point of view, has a power law tail to the left. So uh, when I was looking into it, it see, because there is a connection between entanglement entropy fluctuations and uh, the number of particles in each region, uh, it seemed to me logical that you would see also some long tail in the number of particle uh, distribution in each part when you're cutting a system, although the whole system has a, a given number of particles, but when you are cutting it somewhere, of course, you will have fluctuations in the number of particles. I told Boris my hunch uh, two months ago. He told me, no, you won't see it, and that's for you. Indeed, you don't see it. The, the distribution in, in the number of particles is Gaussian for the metallic, the black, and for, uh, for, the, for the superconducting regime. So this has more physics than a simple fluctuation in the number of particles within it. So what else can we? pull out of the entanglement entropy. Remember that our, my original motivation was trying to understand the many-body localization. Until now, I 
talked about uh, ground state properties. Ground state properties will not show us uh, many body localization. On the other hand, with any method connected with uh, DMRG, any numerical methods of this type has a very hard time moving to higher excitation energy. Uh, so, uh, in a sense, so what can one do? Actually, there is some, uh, some hope in the fact that actually the entanglement entropy is uh, some summation over the eigenvalues of the reduced density matrix. But, but as noted by uh, Leon Haldane a few years ago, the, the eigenvalues of the reduced density matrix hold some information about the excited states. And, and, the, and the logic behind it is uh, quite straightforward. Basically, what are we doing in the reduced density matrix? We're cutting the system into one part, into a region A, and summing out uh, region B. If we are for the low-lying excitations, they are not very strongly coupled to region B just because it's, uh, because density of states arguments. Uh, and uh, therefore, you can hope that there's some correspondence between the eigenvalues of the reduced density matrix and the eigenvalues of a finite section of the many particle system. Okay, sounds intriguing, but, but can we show it? Okay, uh, first of all, uh, it's very important to try to uh, see if we see something of uh, the behaviors that we expect from a disordered many particle excitation uh, spectrum in, uh, in the levels, in the behavior of the spectrum of the reduced density matrix. So what do, for single particle systems, we know very well, Boris in a seminal paper was pointed it out basically, localized uh, regime will have for single electrons a Poisson distribution, no level repulsion. The metallic regime, we can have GOE or GUE, depending on uh, the symmetry of the system. So we have a transition from Poisson to uh, Wigner. If we're looking on many particle excitations, the game is a bit more uh, complicated because let's think of the simplest case where we have a many body system the non-interacting case, then basically we have our single electron levels and we're just filling up states. So ground state is very simple, fill up all the states to the Fermi energy. The first excited state of the many particle system is again very simple, you're just moving this electron one level up and you will get a distribution which is equal to the single electron distribution. On the other hand, if we are looking on some uh, ith excitation, we will see that the populations, the fillings of the single electron orbitals will be completely different between uh, two neighboring uh, states. Therefore, there will, should be no overlap between them. Sh therefore, no uh, level repulsion and, uh, and uh, Basically, we'll see Poisson statistic and another uh, consequence of, uh, of just combinatorics there is a huge increase in the density of states. Okay, so let's look on the excitations of a finite segment of a, of a, of a many particle system. And if I'm just looking on the average, I see a very peculiar behavior. Meaning, okay, on general it goes down, so that's good. But I see here some structures, the first, second, fourth, uh, seventh, and so on state. 
has a much larger uh, level spacing than its neighbors. Moreover, it shows also different statistics. While the levels the, with the small level spacing shows expected Poisson behavior, the ones with the large one show something that is much closer to the single electron spacing. The good news is that also the entanglement spectrum shows exactly the same uh, behavior. So the positive thing about this uh, comparison is that more or less for uh, the low-lying uh, spectrum of the reduced density matrix, we see the, exactly the same behavior and distributions as we see for the excited state. This is lost for higher excitations as expected. You already don't see these sharp. You see remnants, but not sharp peaks. The question that remains is uh, why do we have this structure? And actually, the answer is uh, we, are, we were dealing here with uh, ballistic uh, distribution, uh, ballistic uh, one dimensional system. And in this case, basically, when you are looking on the excite, excited states of the many body. Uh, system, you're basically going back to an old problem in uh, mathematics, which is basically just the question, how, it's known in mathematics as a partition function, it's not the physical partition function. It's just a question if I have an integer in how many different ways can I build it up out of uh, other integers. And basically, the peaks here are the points where I filled up a shell. I don't have a new, any other way to build up the same uh, number, but I have to jump to a higher energy and start. And of course, as we grow up, go up in energy, this occurs uh, less and less frequently. And actually, you can exactly calculate these numbers and see that they fit. So that's a nice uh, curiosity. Okay, so uh, what do we, so we saw that we have here shell structures that are more single particle in, uh, in nature. First question that we can ask ourselves is for the many body system, uh, what is the behavior that we uh, can see as function of disorder? And indeed we are going back to a more and more Poisson behavior for the many particle system as uh, disorder increased. More interesting, if we put interactions in, in, into, and we change the strengths of interactions, the peaks that we saw before because of the shell uh, structure are wiped out as with stronger, stronger interactions. Although the peaks very close to the low-lying excitations are very robust. The higher ones are, uh, are wiped out. This is maybe some manifestation of uh, delocalization in folk space and uh, many body localization. Actually, if you're looking on the distribution, it goes from Poisson to more and more uh, GOE, again, as expected from uh, a naive expectation of the many body localization. It's interesting that the same type of behavior also remains in the superconducting regime, even the same, more or less the same shell structure, and it's very nice that it's a reduced density matrix actually shows different, be, shows its symmetry also in the reduced density matrix uh, eigenvalues. It crosses over from GOE to GUE there, and which I find uh, very amusing. Okay, what can I say about uh, the many body localization uh, behavior? So, uh, I'll skip this one. Okay, so, so what do we expect? 
okay, we know the argument about uh, for finite systems, the fact that low-lying levels don't have the density of states and therefore they are, uh, uh, their width remains, con uh, remains small. Once we go to higher excitations, they become larger. We, we know that we expect as, uh, as function of temperature or excitation energy to see a transition for interacting systems from an uh, insulator to a metal behavior. What can we do with uh, our numerics? Uh, conductance is almost impossible to calculate for these this systems. Lev full level statistics for finite uh, interacting systems is prohibitively hard and people uh, went into uh, different models of the infinite temperature since then there are much more work where you are looking on a highly excited state. But can you see something for the for the transition point where you expect that if you are playing with the interaction strengths, you will see a transition between uh, localized and delocalized behavior. With, no, with weak interactions, you'll see a uh, uh, localized regime. You turn on interaction, you'll start to see a delocalized behavior. Indeed, with this entanglement entropy, we can't go into very, uh, very uh, high uh, excitations. Also, with the reduced density matrix eigenvalues, we can't go very high, but we can insert strong interactions and therefore hope that you'll see something for uh, even for uh, lower lying systems. Okay, so what do you see? On one hand, something very encouraging. You can see here you start with something, the black curve, which is, uh, which is a non-interacting case, and we see a Poisson, which is uh, in line with what you expect from a localized, the localized regime. You're turning on interaction, you see a transition, towards uh, GOE, so it seems fine. We have here what we are looking. That's a traditional way to see in one particle system the transition between localized and uh, extended states. The point is that usually for single particle uh, states, you want to see this behavior as a finite size behavior. And the point that is very uh, bothering here, you see I'm changing the system size, 300, 700, 1,100, and you see almost no change here. So uh, it, it waves your flag that something here is not usual. You, you don't see here a straightforward localization, delocalization transition. So, we can see that part of the problem are these type of shell states that get mixed into the problem and cause some skewness. But my guess is, and that is the point that I'm working at the moment and trying to understand better. Is there something to do with the non-ergodicity that Boris uh, predicts there? And somehow the fact that we have an intermixture of these states skews the, the regular uh, finite size behavior that I expected here. So uh, the summary of the whole uh, business is basically that uh, entanglement depends on the correlation, and that's the way it shows us quantum phase transitions. It's a very good way, way to see uh, different types of transitions as I have described uh, in the talk. 
we can use not only the average entanglement entropy, but also its distribution and the eigenvalues of the reduced density matrix to show this quantum phase transition. And perhaps it opens a window to look into uh, many body localization. And finally, the regular Jewish uh, blessing till 120, so you have another factor of two. <laughs> <laughs>